the topic that we have today um, is around this term, early relational health. And we will take um, some time to talk uh, about that. And also I have the pleasure of having two of my close colleagues uh, who can join us to share their perspectives. Uh, for all of you uh, who haven't met me, I am Junlei Li. I am the Sao Zen Senior Lecturer in Early Childhood Education and the co-chair of the Human Development Program here at uh, the Ed School. And uh, it's my pleasure uh, to welcome two of my great colleagues, uh, Thelma Ramirez. Uh, Thelma is a researcher here at the Ed School uh, in the field of social emotional development, as well as human relationships. Um, she is the co-author of the recent early relational health report with me, and we will be sharing the link to the report on the webpage and later on in the chat as well. And before coming to Harvard, Thelma was a practitioner in the field of home visiting supporting families. And we also have Jessica Sager. Jessica, for 25 years, has been the exec, uh, CEO and the co-founder of the national nonprofit, All of Our Kin. Uh, All of Our Kin supports, trains, and advocates for family child care providers all across the country. Um, she co-teaches a seminar at Yale University called Child Care, Society, and Public Policy. And these three terms are very much the intersection of her advocacy work um, and, um, and her leadership work on a daily basis. So welcome, Thelma and Jessica. It's so odd to see you on screen because I usually <laughs> see you in person. Um, welcome, um, both of you. Just for our audience, um, I just wanted to explain very briefly what is it that we mean by early relational health. Um, for some of you, this may be a brand new term. Um, for others, you might have heard about it, particularly within the last five years. One of the most interesting reactions I've had to any kind of presentation about early relational health, or even just in conversation when the term come up, is that people would say, oh, that's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> and, uh, and, and by that, I wanted to say that Early relational health is the latest reminder of the oldest idea in human development. It is just this foundational idea that each and every one of us as human beings, our well being is grounded in the relationship we have with people around us. And by well being, being, we mean physical health, we mean behavioral health, mental health, as well as our capacity to learn and grow at any age in any kind of setting. So that this idea isn't new at all, um, depending on the particular field and discipline you're in, it has gone by many names, for example, attachment or infant mental health, or, or sometimes called infant and early childhood mental health. I think the Harvard Center on Developing Child called it serve and return. Um, each of these names and each of these disciplines captures some element of what is it that we mean by early relational health. So one of the questions is, why do we need a reminder of the oldest idea um, in human development? I think one of the reasons that we need this reminder is that it allows us to take a look at, at our work in early childhood uh, with children and families and professionals in a relational lens, as opposed to, for example, in early childhood, you can think about it in terms of a brain science lens or an economist lens, right? While brain science and economists have made significant contributions to the early childhood field, the way we typ typically talk about brain science, we're talking about the individual. We are talking about what is happening inside the individual brain. When we talk about return on investment, we're also talking about the individual. We're talking about the changes in the outcomes of that individual and how that then is measured and reflected back onto society. 
The importance of taking a relational lens is that the moment you have to say the word relationship, you have to acknowledge that there are at least two people in relationship, if not more. And then you have to acknowledge that both of these people have needs, have capacities, and that both of them need care, support, and everything else that we do. So fundamentally, by casting our working early childhood in a relational lens, lens, it enlarges the focus of whose needs we're trying to meet and whose development that we're trying to support. And the other aspect is if we extend this idea, right, beyond just relationship between two people, to think about relationships with our families, across our communities, Early relational health demand us to have an ecological perspective so that we're not just thinking about how do we meet the needs of a particular child or a particular family, but how do we build a relationally healthy community and neighborhood, right? For everyone who's in it, parents, children, caregivers, informal caregivers, formal caregivers, and all the professionals who support them. And so that ecological view to me was probably best captured um, in the 2021 position statement by the American Academy of Pediatrics on the very topic of relational health and the thematic um, uh, statement from the American Academy of Pediatrics is that safe, stable, and nurturing relationships are promoted in safe, stable and nurturing families that have access to safe, stable and nurturing communities with a wide range of resources and services. And I think the repetition is intentional, right? It's this idea of parallel relationships. If we care about the health of one relationship, we have to care about the health of layers and layers of relationship that surround that one relationship. So in a way, this is truly the oldest idea in human development, but at the same time, the reminder is for us to widen our lens, to look at the many different human beings that are involved in these important relationships, and to think about communities and societies and systems at large. So, Jessica, I'm just going to turn to you, starting from the very beginning, whereas I think for some of us, like myself in early childhood field, we gradually found our way to think about systems and society and parallel relationships. I think your work for 25 years advocating for family child care providers started in thinking about systems, thinking about the parallel relationship, thinking about the importance of caring for the caregivers. And that's at the heart of your work. And I love to hear and kind of what is the you find affirming about the early relational health message, particularly in the context of your work? Thank you so much. So I will say that I am one of these people that when I heard the term early relational health, I said, finally, there's a name for what we've been doing for all these years. Um, and all our kin, as, as Dr. Lee said, we work with family child care educators. So these are mostly women who open their homes to care for children, especially infants and toddlers, children whose families may work evenings and weekends, children whose parents may have barriers to accessing care. And we recognized 25 years ago that these family child care educators were in fact creating safe, stable and nurturing environments for our very youngest children. And they were creating safe, stable, nurturing environments for parents as trusted partners who could be relied upon. But we were asking family child care educators to do this without adequate support, adequate funding or adequate respect. And so at All Our Kin, we created our own version of a parallel process where we have coaches and trainers who work with family child care educators in that same spirit of reciprocity, of respect, 
and of mutual support that we hope that educators will bring into the lives of children and families. And what we have seen again and again is that family child care educators make it possible for our youngest children to thrive and make it possible for parents to succeed both out in the world, knowing their children are safe, and also at home because that burden of anxiety about where their children are is lessened. So that parallel process of wondering, of joy, of relationship, of support is embedded in everything that we do. And I thank you for putting a name to that. So Jessica, I, I as you were talking, it just reminded me that so often we talk about childcare providers in a very kind of narrow way, right? We think, oh, you know, if they are there, parents can go to work. But but in your experience and in what you just described, this isn't this includes supporting parents to go to work, but this is really one of the important role of the family child care providers isn't just to care for the child, but to care for the entire family and strengthen and support what the family is doing at home with their own children. Yes, I, I'm so glad you brought that up. So we know that family child care educators are really trusted partners and messengers for parents. In fact, we partnered with a student at the Yale Medical School who wrote her thesis on the topic of who do parents trust for advice about their children's development and behavior. It turns out parents trust their educator more often than even their pediatrician because the educator knows the child. And I think this speaks very deeply to the early relational health concept. It's not who has the most expertise, it's who has the deepest relationship and therefore the deepest insight. And because of that, Parents do turn to educators for guidance. They turn to them for advice and support. And in times of crisis, like during the COVID pandemic, it's family child care educators that often provided knowledge, information, access to basic needs, and reassurance to parents during times of anxiety and stress. That's right. That's right. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. So, Thelma, um, Something very exciting happened when you and I were finishing the report. <laughs> you were quite literally still in the stage of editing the final draft of the report when you went to the hospital and <laughs> welcomed your little baby girl. And and the, and I just I know this is going to be a big topic, but you have worked for so many years, even before you became a researcher as a home visitor to support families with very young children. And you then have been a researcher thinking about young children and caregivers and all of that. But then when you became a parent <laughs> and, and also at the same time, you also trusted your child care providers, like all of this have a much deeper and personal meaning <laughs> in the work you do and the things you write about. I, I don't even have a question except like, what did it feel like when all these things become so real right there in your own life? Yeah, I, it's been, you know, it's been really interesting, Junlei, um, just to reflect on even the way that I read or interacted with the, the, the report uh, professionally and then later personally. So, you know, as a home visitor, I think one of the things that, that, I, I came to understand very clearly was that, for example, my program was not the be all and end all in that in order for, for our families to be successful and to get all of their needs met, we had to form connections with other organizations and refer them to different places. And so I understood that very clearly that we were part, you know, one part of the puzzle and one speck in this, you know, at the time I didn't think about it in this way, but this early relational ecosystem. And so as I've been reflecting a little bit on now my experience as a parent, I had a very similar, I think, humbling experience. And as Jessica was, was sharing, um, a lot of what she was saying resonated with me. Um, I think as a parent, as a new parent, I thought, oh, you know, I, I can handle this. I can take on all of these things. And 
um, it's just become really clear to me in a very real way how important this early relational ecosystem is. I mean, this week I, I, um, I've been in contact with my baby's pediatrician, with our nurse there at the office. She's been checking that up on us because we have an ear infection that we're dealing with. And every couple of hours, I'm getting updates from, from her um, childcare provider. So she's there Monday through Thursday, and we're all kind of monitoring, monitoring her. So I think one of the things that's become super clear to me is that we all of these relationships that, you know, Romina, my, my baby, is, is developing uh, around her that I'm developing with the daycare providers, with the pediatricians, all of those are so important. And, and that's we're all, you know, in it together to help her thrive. That's wonderful. And it's just been so exciting to talk to you, Thelma, not just about the science, but just to talk about your experiences as a new parent, um, navigating all of that. One of the questions I wanted to ask both of you, because I think it's been an important theme in both of your work and what is it that you value as professionals, but as well as as human beings. And it has to do with this word caregiving. And it's caregiving within the family, but also caregiving to and for the family. And the reason I wanted to bring it up is that in over the years, as I talked to different experts about relationships and interactions, even you know, in the past few years, talking to uh, folks from all over the field uh, uh, who are interested in early relational health, Often we immediately, and at least in early childhood, we immediately go to words like playing, reading, <laughs> singing songs, and so on. We rarely, right, automatically put caregiving first. And so sometimes it's the last thought we're like, oh, and caregiving too. <laughs> um, but so much of what happens inside the family and so much of what happens inside the family child care provider is caregiving, right? It's the rocking to sleep, it's the changing diapers, it's the learning how to eat, and, and it's all those kind of almost seemingly mundane things. I just wondered for both of your perspectives on um, caregiving and, and how that enters into this maybe sometimes even sound like, you know, a fancy term, like early relational health. Um, I, I can start because I, your question really opened up my mind. We have been talking a lot about care in this country, and we often talk about care as though it's a series of mechanical tasks, whereas in fact, meeting someone's needs is an act of love and attention and is a moment of connection. And so thinking about care as absolutely the act of providing food, of changing a diaper, but also the act of listening, of paying attention, of being with a child or a parent in a time of need, you know? And in our society, we have so devalued care that we expect parents and educators to do this work of care in isolation, but we don't realize that they need care too. And so, so much of we do, what we do at All Our Kin is create communities of care for educators to care for each other and to get to put down that burden for a little while and be cared for by our team and staff as well so that then they can resume the act of giving children that care that is so deeply rooted in love. Thelma, what do you think? Yeah, no, I, you know, I, I was recently having a conversation with, with someone who is um, a teacher in, in a child care center, and we were talking about early relational health, and she told me, she was really excited about how affirming it was to read about the value of these of caregiving interactions because oftentimes whether it's observations or or parents questions are oftentimes around you know the academics and are you teaching my baby you know the the letters and and there's so much caregiving that's happening throughout the day that we don't ask you know specifically how how those interactions have gone and 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 when we don't ask about them we we in many ways are signaling that we don't value them 
And so for her, she was mentioning how affirming it was um, to hear the importance of, of care. So I'm especially excited about the potential for something like early relational health to highlight the value of care. Thank you. Thank you. And I, you know, listening to both of you reminds me of kind of my own work early on in orphanages. A lot of the research in the orphanages are, are actually what gave us the understanding of early childhood brain science and so on. And one of the things that I admired or resilient orphanage caregivers so much is that they didn't have much time for the playing, for all those things we might typically value. But what they did have is caregiving. And, and, and what the best orphanage caregiver did in even those terribly adverse conditions is to put their love into the caregiving, into the diaper change, into the bathing, even though those were very brief moments that they have with the children. So I do have a question from the audience. Um, in particular, the question about, as we think about, you know, we, we can imagine, right? There are places that are very well resourced and you can put all these things in place, right? To support a community and support everyone. But in so many parts of the United States and certainly so many parts around the world, we're already significantly under-resourced. How do we think about supporting something like early relational health, this kind of a vision and framework in places that are already struggling with inequitable distribution of resources and so on. And, and I'm curious to hear what both of you think, because I know both of you actually work a lot in communities, with communities and in places that have very limited access to resources. I think you have a, a wonderful um, statement in your five principles around early relational health where you, it's something like do the simple things. And I think your story about the caregivers in orphanages is a great example of this. One wonderful thing about the early relational health framework is it doesn't focus on, for example, buying all the most expensive equipment or materials. It focuses on interactions between people. And I know that time can be a scarce resource for staff and educators that are overburdened, but thinking about how to focus time on care, on education, and on relationships, that's a step that all of us can take in our work with children, in our work with parents, and our work with educators. And I would add that it is something we can do in our work within systems to change our focus, to focus on the relationship and how it is that we are going to engage with players at every level of the system. It's not a perfect answer. We have to move towards a more equitable distribution of resources if we are to live into a vision of ourselves as a just society. But in the meantime, we can care for each other just with the simple fact of being who we are. I know I'll add to that this kind of th that question resonated with me because I think we hear versions of it Junlei it's almost a version of being enough and we hear it from families from all kinds of backgrounds even if you know we we see them as living in a well resourced neighborhood so many parents are often wondering if what they're doing is enough and so taking the time to affirm those caregiving practices and what they're already doing is so important. The work I'm sure that 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 folks at all our kin are doing and home visitors are doing is just so crucial because you're in the home, you're seeing that and in those moments affirming that it's just so, so important for all, I think for all parents. So Thelma, um, one of the things I just, I come to you all the time just to think through is when it comes to supporting families, right? There are so many out there, not just home visitors, but pediatricians, right? And uh, childcare providers. There's all these different professions whose lives intersect families. So when it comes to supporting families and their early relational health, like what might be either a principle or a strategy that you hold so dear to your work as well as now you know, in your own experience as a parent of a young child. 
Yeah, I think a big part of it has as a home visitor and, I, and it's as a home visitor, it was always around trusting that families um, want what's best for their children and that, that they have the capacity to um, to engage in these types of interactions that are going to help their children thrive. And so I think entering into a home with that kind of mindset and and always looking for things to build on is, is so important. And I have to remind myself often now as a parent, what are the things I'm already doing? Because often at the end of the day, I end up thinking about all the things that I didn't do or the time that I didn't get to spend with a baby. And so I have to take myself back and remind myself like, what are, what are the things that, how did we interact and, and what was good in those moments? Yeah. Thank you. And Jessica, um... One of the striking features of the work of all of our kin is not just that you provide resources and services for family child care providers, but that you build a community, a community of care among the care providers. And I often find that to be so important because when I think back to what families and providers struggled with during the pandemic, Right. It's this profound sense of isolation and disconnectedness from everything else. The family child care provider without that community, even in other states that have worked with, often work alone, right, in their homes, shouldering the caregiving responsibility. What principles or strategies that have guided your work to focus on building a human community? <laughs> around the providers, the care providers themselves? I am so glad you asked that question because of all the things All Our Kin does, building community is absolutely the most important. And, you know, educators are hungry for community. So all you have to do really is set the table. And I mean that literally set the table, right? So in the pre-COVID days, to offer food, to have a meal, to bring folks together to talk and connect in a space outside of their work time where they feel loved and valued and get to interact with each other. Community builds among people who share a set of beliefs and our educators all believe deeply that it is their mission to support children's well-being. So the connections happen really fast. And even when COVID hit, we thought, how are we gonna do this in a virtual world? It turns out, and you knew this way before we did, that you can create those spaces online as well. It's harder, it takes more work. I still prefer the in-person spaces, but you can create those containers, those holders where people come together. And once those communities exist, it extends way beyond that space to the educator who can call another peer and say, I'm having a really tough day. Let me tell you my story, or let's meet up at the playground, or let me share this wonderful strategy with you, or let's join together to advocate for this policy change. The power of those communities is absolutely the most important thing we can do. And anything we've done to help create that at All Our Kin, that's the thing we're proudest of. It's wonderful. Thank you so much. And what you said just reminded me, and I wanted to give a shout out to all the family child care providers in the state of Hawaii. <laughs> and that, that, that it's certainly the oldest form of child care in any country, but particularly in the state of Hawaii. And, and, and last week I was there, I walked into a family child care provider and these six little children came up to me and they had made lay right out of their own craft there were three of them and they just covered me with it for the two hours i was there observing the classroom and then when i went to join the community of family child care providers that came across the state and of course they had what made for me and that was the first thing they gave it to me to put it on me and i would just it was such an honor to be with family child care providers but it's also such an honor to just honor caregiving not let it to be the last thing we say about relationships, but it, it's the very first thing that we talk about in relation to our work. Well, thank you both, Helma and Jessica. I am sure I'll see you very soon. Thank you for all of you who have joined us 
30 minutes is very brief. Uh, we will share different resources and reports and please look up the work uh, uh, from all of our kin for Jessica Sager, uh, Sager as well as um, uh, the report that Thelma and I put together, as well as the work of many professionals all across the country, across many, many disciplines of early childhood um, who have started to kind of convene together to remind ourselves the relational foundation of what makes early childhood work worthwhile. Thank you everyone and uh, enjoy the rest of the morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. Once again, Thelma, Jessica, thank you.